Many regard Breaking Bad as the greatest TV show of all time. But many also believe that Breaking Bad is about a good man turning into an evil one. Walter White makes many choices in Breaking Bad that may seem immoral or unethical. There are different points in the show where Walter White's character gets irredeemable for people. This will be an ethical analysis of Walter White to understand that Walter White did absolutely nothing wrong. Some people argue that Walter's life wasn't really that bad before, but Walter didn't have a good life to begin with. Walter White is completely mistreated by those around him. He got cut out of a billion dollar company by his old business partners Gretchen and Elliot. His students in chemistry class have absolutely no respect for him. And Hank basically calling him a weak man in this scene. No, no, it's just heavy. That's why they hire men. <laughs> his son calls him names. You're a pussy. He doesn't even care if his own father dies. Then why don't you just f***ing die already? And all his wife does is give him bad manual sex and veggie bacon. And on top of all of this, he gets diagnosed with terminal lung cancer. People think of Walter as a good guy in the first episode, but he's only good through inaction. And Walter truly becomes a good man as the series progresses. Now, some would argue that Walter had a good life and he blew up his family because of his own actions. And it was his fault that they hated him. But this is simply not true. Walter wasn't a bad guy, he just became based. Let me define this term because it can get a little confusing. Based, when used as an adjective, means based on itself. That's right. This term was coined by the based god. Here, Joe Rogan does a great job of explaining what based means in a contemporary context. Like based, like there's, what's that dude, Lil B, the based god, is that his name? Um, and, but I didn't know what based means, but I've heard it used a bunch of times and it's always a positive yes. descriptive. And there's a, an urban dictionary definition. It's, based is all about being yourself and not caring about what anybody else thinks. That bag looks gay on you. I don't care, I'm based. Now, what makes Walter White so based is that he didn't have a father figure, but he still turned out to be a great role model for the young men in his life to look up to, Walt Jr. and Jesse Pinkman. Walter White is a great male role model for these boys and young men all around because he possesses something that is absent in a lot of men today. And that, my friends, is power. The definition of power is possession of control, authority, or influence over others. To illustrate the importance of power in a father figure, let's look at the Oedipus Complex by Sigmund Freud. In the young boy, there is a conflict that arises, because the boy develops an unconscious sexual desire for his mother. Envy and jealousy are aimed at the father. The hostile feelings towards the father lead to castration anxiety and irrational fear that the father will castrate, remove the penis, as punishment. Now, the important part is that to cope with this anxiety, the son identifies with the father. Through this identification with the aggressor, boys acquire their superego in the male sex role. So according to Fraud, it is extremely important to have a powerful father figure to shape one's superego. And Walt's journey is all about taking the power that he never had before. He becomes the, the danger. danger. A great example of Walt being a great role model is when he teaches his son how to be a real man and hold his liquor down. He shows Hank that he is the man of the house now. My son, my bottle, my house. And he takes the power that he never had. Walter stands up for his son by stepping on the ankle of the Chad. What's wrong, Chief? Having a little trouble walking? When Walter White caused him and Jesse to get the upper hand on Tuco, this represents Walt attaining more power. There is a great crossover with the Halo franchise in this scene. Walt even decides to blow up this guy's car with his newfound power. This is deep symbolism because it represents the evils of the BMW Corporation and its horrid corruption. Walter works so hard and cooks breakfast and dinner and even buys Junior a car. And Skyler kicks him out and gives all of his money to Ted Beneke. Most importantly, Skyler also subjects us to the most cringy moment in television history. Happy birthday to you. Skyler. Happy birthday to you. Was to blame. Walt is a great dad. He only had a few years to live. He needed to provide for his family. And he figured, hey, 
Meth makes some money, so, I mean, it was the only natural course of action. What Walt does, he does for his family. Now, many would counter the argument and say that Walt didn't just do it for his family, he did it for himself. But I say there's nothing wrong with liking what you're good at, being the best at something, and having it provide for your family at the same time. Frankly, it's the American dream. Now, Walter and Gail's favorite poet, Walt Whitman, even says, I'm as bad as the worst, but thank God I am as good as the best. There's a line from Crime and Punishment that heavily pertains to Walt and his story. I wanted to find out then and quickly whether I was a louse like everyone else or a man, whether I can step over barriers or not, whether I dare stoop to pick up or not, whether I'm a trembling creature or whether I have the right. I won. Walt wanted to see if he was merely a trembling creature, or if he had the right to reach and take the power that was there for him. And Walt stops trembling. He becomes the danger. He is the one who knocks. All of Walter White's killings were justifiable. Now, there's a big difference between justified and justifiable. Justifiable describes an action that can be justified while justified may describe something that has been justified already. Walt's actions are all justifiable given the context. Walter killed Crazy Eight in order to protect Jesse and him. This was a last resort effort. We see Walt really feels bad about this because tears stream down his face. Also, from then on, if you look closely, Walter eats his sandwiches with his crust cut off, showing that he really cared about Crazy Eight and that experience stuck with him. Jane would have absolutely led to the death of Jesse, causing him to OD, or Jesse would have eventually died by the hands of Gus, because he would have continued to disappoint and be unstable. And if there's one thing that Gus doesn't like, that's instability. Now Jesse lets Walt down because of Jane. He's all strung up on heroin when he needs him to sell the meth to Gus. Jane also blackmailed Walter into giving Jesse his money. Understanding why letting Jane die was justifiable, we need to take a look at the famous trolley problem posed by Philippa Foote. The trolley problem goes something like this. A train is headed for five workers on a railroad, and there is no way of warning those workers. But you are near a lever that will direct the train to another line in which it only kills one person instead of the five. Many people would say this is justified, but what if instead of the lever, the only option was that you had to push a fat man in front of the train in order for it to stop? Many would say this action isn't justified, even though it has the same exact outcome as the previous dilemma. It's just two different ways to get to the same outcome. Walter White allows Jane to choke on her own vomit, which is something not mutually agreed upon to be justified, but is something that is justifiable given the circumstances. All Walter's doing is taking a more direct approach in saving Jesse's life. Now, some people would argue that Walt was the reason for all those people dying on the plane because he let Jane die and therefore was the reason why Jane's dad messed up and caused the death of all those people. But that would be like saying that General Motors was responsible for killing those two drug dealers. And we already know that BMW is the only evil car corporation in this series. Many people say that Walt killed Gale only to save his neck and that Gale was completely innocent. But Gale was not an innocent man. Gale was extremely annoying. Vince Gilligan even revealed that Gale was a heavy Reddit user, downloading this song off of r slash chemistry. There's antimony, arsenic, aluminum, selenium, and hydrogen, and oxygen, and nitrogen, and rhenium, and nickel, neodymium, neptunium, germanium. Gale should have opened up a wildly successful business selling his coffee. The only way Walt's decision to kill Gale wouldn't have been justifiable would be if they decided to open a coffee shop together, which, in all honesty, should have happened because. Oh my god. Now, the only potentially non-justifiable part of this bombing wasn't that it was in a nursing home. No, it was because Hector was super based, and losing him was quite sad. Now, killing Hector was the only way in which to have Walter and Jesse have their lives spared. Many consider Walter killing Mike one of the least justifiable things that Walter ever did. But I would say otherwise. Walter didn't kill Mike because his pride was hurt. No. 
Walter could kill everybody on the list without having to fear consequences from Mike. Another reason Walter killing Mike was justifiable was that Walter is connected to Werner Zeigler from Better Call Saul. Vince Gilligan even came out and said that Werner is actually Walter's a strange German older brother who changed his last name. We know this because Heisenberg was the scientist behind the Nazi atomic bomb project. He is both Werner and Walter's grandfather. This is why Walter picks Heisenberg for his drug kingpin name. This was all an elaborate plot to take revenge on Mike from the very start because Walter knew that Mike had killed his brother, Werner. He simply took Mike's advice and didn't take a half measure. All right, now one of the biggest arguments for Walter being a bad person would be how he treated Jesse throughout the series. Jesse suffers from a common sickness found in many young males in today's society. It's called LBS, or Little Baby Syndrome, where over time, this syndrome makes the infected's head grow in size and illustrate symptoms of being a little baby. Jesse wanted to go go-karting with Walt. He also calls Walt's house many times. How annoying is that? But regardless of this, Walt tries saving Jesse on multiple occasions. Now, people say that Walt twistedly manipulated Jesse, but I would call it the art of persuasion and misdirection, just like a good magician. Walt has to take him under his wing and sometimes give him a little tough love, sometimes manipulate him into, into getting back on track, focusing, and go down this, this right path. Otherwise, we're susceptible to being caught. So the manipulation that Walter White does for Jesse Pinkman is for his own damn good. Telling Jesse how he killed Jane is looked at as pretty cruel, but Walt completely deserved to be able to tell Jesse because Jesse betrayed him. Telling the bikers to kill Jesse was completely justifiable because he would have come after Walt one way or the other. Walt was nothing but nice to Jesse before his betrayal, as you can see here. This is with the blowfish, Jeff. <laughs> You're not Jeff. <laughs> Who's Walt is less condescending and reckless than another famous actual anti-hero in history. This anti-hero's name is Jimmy Neutron. In an episode of Jimmy Neutron released in 2004 called Men at Work, Jimmy Neutron is talking to his manager at the fast food restaurant McSpanky's. Jimmy insists on calling classic table salt sodium chloride, but Skeet says, uh, dude, dude. That would be salt. salt. Jimmy is extremely condescending here, trying to prove his intellect is much higher than that of Skeet. Now compare this to Walter White in the similar scene with Jesse Pinkman. What one particular element comes to mind? Hmm? Hmm? Uh, wire. Uh, copper. Walter is simply trying to help Jesse understand the chemistry. And when Jesse gets it wrong, he simply moves on. Where Walter was always trying to help Jesse, Jimmy Neutron just wanted to use his intellect to feel superior to all of those around him, resulting in the world burning. Overall, Walter White was a perfect father figure to the young men around him. All of Walter White's actions were justifiable. The only thing Walter White could have been in the wrong for, frankly, was caring too much about Jesse Pinkman. People argue about the definitive moment when Walter White became Heisenberg. They point to when Walter let Jane die, or sometimes as early as when he killed Crazy Eight, or when he killed Mike. But no, it would have to be this one, because it shows how good of a father Walt really was. All Walter did, he did for his family. One of the biggest complaints about the show's ending is that Walt didn't have to atone for any of his sins. He killed everyone he needed to, he's calm when he confronts everyone, his family got the money, Jesse is free, and he dies a peaceful death as Badfinger's Baby Blue plays. Walt attains the ultimate power even in his death. Walt won, and I believe he deserved to win. <laughs>